into this game. <laughs> Spawning up in the top right, it is the Cranky Ducklings, Eric. Quite the trickster. And down here in the bottom left-hand side of the map, one of the NA staples for many, many, many years at this point, he is the Red Terran player, Foxer, representing Berserker Esports. Yes, yes, he is. And uh, quite a quite a cool lad. Mm -hmm. His, yeah, uh, yeah he's, he's a nice guy. No, he's a super duper nice guy. I feel like I've been seeing him in a lot of like, just random smaller events for many, many years. I mean, like I remember seeing him in like 2015 playing in like the team leagues and stuff uh, for amateur kind of like semi-pro NA scene stuff. And it's kind of also a testament to the fact that Foxer is one of those people who has been like a Grandmaster League player for a very long time, has been kind of just shy of being able to compete at something like a DreamHack NA regional or something. And it goes to show you because he's played and gotten literally one round away from qualifying for the NA regionals in the past couple of years and has just barely been shy of it. But this is the first kind of season he's been able to do it. And I really, really am super excited for him. I'm so happy he was able to make it here. And I actually can't wait to see what he's going to be able to do. Because I know he did have a kind of first tough round match versus Kelazor, but he went one and two versus Kelazor, who literally is actually just showed how good his TVT is versus future. Like, that's a very understandable loss, and he still managed to look good losing. I am actually so excited for Foxer. Yeah, that's it's super interesting to me because a lot of times when players develop and they become, you know, they become really good, it doesn't start with them beating Hero Marine. It doesn't start with them beating Serral, Clem. It starts with them beating lesser known players. And then it starts with them going up against more established players and having really good games, even that they lose. But you watch this development process and it's really cool to see if uh, if players can kind of make that next step. Like for example, Battleby is a player that I'm really, really in love with his trajectory right now. <laughs> uh, and he started off still losing games to, you know, Serral, to, to Spirit, to uh hero marine to clem but recently and especially in the na or in the eu regionals he actually went one two versus clem and had apparently quite a few opportunities to take that series like just a a really cool development track from him and it's it's really exciting to see for me uh we're gonna see by the way eric slipping across the map this can be quite good against three cc plays if your opponent goes for the reaper and you go for the very quick ling speed, or sorry, uh, goes for the Reaper, doesn't kind of track those lings. We already see one SCV going down. Hellion will pop out, and this is going to be fine for Foxer, but picking off an SCV, that's really nice in the early game. Yeah, picking off the SCV, the Reaper has to pull back because you're kind of busy micring your other units around and making sure your Hellions come out and everything. So you buy a little bit of safety space for your Queens to get up your creep tumor. It's like all these little things absolutely can add up. and. I know I did talk a lot about Foxer in that kind of beginning, and we were talking about how great it is to see him coming up and everything, but Eric himself also, I think, is probably a little bit more well-known at this point as one of the other big breakout players from the Latin American scene. He's one of those players that kind of showed, yeah, Latin America is not literally just Kelazur, Cham, and uh, Special. Like, there are some other players who are on that up and up, and I feel like Eric has absolutely become one of those players that's kind of established his name out there as well. Yeah, and he, he kind of has his own style of approaching the game. Uh, he's mm -hmm. become a little bit more standard recently. Ooh, Hellion's looking for a drive-by opportunity, but there was enough lings to deflect that. Will still be a technically good trade. Five lings for a Hellion is, you know, a 25 mineral surplus, but mm -hmm. the amount of damage he puts on the second Hellion and the fact that that just got you know, checked, got prevented from actually getting in. Still makes this, I would say, good for Eric overall. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's going to be a very quick single Evo. This is something we see every once in a while where you you kind of kickstart your, your Carapace upgrade and then you add the second Evo chamber just a little bit later. Eric is sitting on a lot of resources, actually. For a moment, he was on 900 minerals, 500 gas. That's, that is a lot to be sitting on at this stage of the game. That's a... Uh, that's a steadfast flow. Do we need to do something? I 
I, th I wonder if he was just supply blocked or was waiting for injects. I'm not really sure, to be he's honest. Still sitting on. Okay, that makes sense. Sorry. So it makes sense because he's investing in the Carapace upgrade when the Evo Chamber finished. He was waiting for the Banely Nest to finish so he could start a Banely Speed. And also, he wanted to get up the Spire. So he throws down all three of those. Okay, that is a big gas dump all at once. So I kind of get that. Yeah, but even still, being on that amount of minerals is is kind of strange. This is going to be a 3cc 2-1-1, and Foxer's Metavax did get intercepted quite quickly. There's actually not enough lings to fight that in position, but with the Queens there, he already puts in a fair amount of damage into that one Metavac. Scan comes in, will find that it is going to be Mutaling Bane. That's in a very good scout. Foxer, he... Okay, I was going to say, where is his plus one armor? And yeah, he does start it up now, but with... Widowmines being nerfed. Mutaling Bane is a style that may see a little comeback here. Nice pick off on a couple of uh, reinforcing Marines just kind of sitting there. And Boxer, he's going to try and find some momentum with this little drop, but not able to get anything done just yet. Yeah, not finding anything, but just finding a couple of creep tumors here and there. I think that's perfectly okay. As long as he doesn't end up taking too much more damage on those medevacs, I'm actually okay with this because... He's keeping Eric also pushed back a little bit, which Eric, if he's able to kind of seize a little bit of more map control and is able to get a little Ling run bys through or something and start kind of pulling Boxer further and further back, then once those mutas pop, it's going to be really, really awkward. But he's kind of, he's, he's exerting a little bit of map control right now. He's just pushing Eric slightly back. Yeah, uh, he is doing so. We do have a lot of depots up in the natural. This is not a... Oh, this is actually quite scary for Foxer. Okay, he is going to move some units into position at this natural. This little Ling Bane counterattack could be quite scary to deal with. Foxer, he is... I mean, he's doing a lot of things right now. His upgrades are a little bit late relative to when we'd expect to see them. And he really hasn't been able to do much to deny creep spread, to prevent Eric from kind of having his way with the map. I will say Eric is is weirdly committed on a very low worker count, only on 66 drones right now. I don't know how I feel about this one. And actually going to lose one of those meters doesn't get the missile turret. Quick repair from Fox or very well done. Yeah. I, I'm kind of with you in the sense that like it does seem like Eric is pretty committed. He made a lot of mutas. He did all this off of that kind of like three and a half base economy as he was getting up his fourth base, so. He invested a lot into all that, and he did also make a fair number of lings and banelings, but hasn't actually been able to go for any kind of run-by attempts or anything, because Foxer, it's it's almost a little bit like two Foxer's detriment. The creep spread is kind of getting out of control, like you said, because now he's pulled back so much. But because he's pulled back so much, Eric has also invested into all of these like run-by attempts and ha making all these mutas, and Eric hasn't gotten anything back on his investment. They've both kind of invested into things and not really gotten a lot back from them. <laughs> Yeah, this is very strange. Now, Eric was really good about the plus two carapace timing. He started that out right away, but he forgot to start up the second Evo Chamber upgrade. So his plus one melee is going to be really late here. He did just start to drone up now, and he is transitioning in towards a hive and infestors, but this is a super weird setup for Eric. Uh, usually, Mutaling Bane games are a lot more aggressive than this, but both players have played really, really passive. Now, we do have Widow Mines being transitioned into by Foxer, but he has not started the Drilling Claws upgrade yet, which you do need for permanent cloaking now on those Widow Mines. So it is actually a really important upgrade in addition to just their fighting potential. I, I'm... Oh, wow. Look, oh, my God. Look at how much those uh, links and canes stacking up. Past the, can, can the links squeeze past the rocks? No, it's, it's just like a weird visual thing, but they're like stacking yeah. up so hard. I, I didn't know you could stack that many lings in that location. I wonder how many you could get in there and how much you could boost the DPS by like microing the lings really hard. <laughs> oh my god. It's almost like mineral walking drones. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like drone drilling oh. or Oh Ooh, my god. Shot. Yeah, I mean first bit of real engagement and aggression that we're seeing from these two players and those Widowmine shots are pretty great, but also a good cleanup there on Foxer's Marines, but Foxer now it's just, okay, for a moment, it just looked like he stimmed his entire army and he was ready to just go deep on a creep and go for things. But now he's going to try and defend this location. The Bailey is looking for connection. Oh, they get forced back. 
Oh, infestors. And... Oh, fungals could be huge there. That is a big fungal on the medevacs and marines. Widow mines. Are they going to friendly fire the medevacs a little bit? Base. Oh, gets saved by the skin of its teeth. Very nice mass repair right there from Foxer. Huge fungal on the tail end, but it doesn't get the kill. All the fungals have been used up. Oh, Foxer does not want to lose all those Marines. That is a lot of very low health Marines, and he will manage to get the hot pickup. Widow Mines. Oh, mostly getting mitigated. They do go off. Eric is on a good economy, but not a great economy for Mutaling Bane. It is expensive to replace all those units. Drilling Claws has completed now. No 3 3 yet on the way, but the upgrades are still a little bit better here for Foxer. Yeah. For the moment. That's. It's so interesting watching Foxer because it almost reminds me of kind of, and I know I feel like I've seen Foxer play like mech style and stuff in the past before. It almost reminds me as though he was playing Bile like a mech player. Like he's mm. hurtling up, he's being super defensive, he's trying to gradually take like more and more forward bases and stuff and not really worrying about cleaning up a ton of creep, just getting things at the edge of his uh, bases so he can be a little bit safer. It's, he's, he's, it feels like he's doing mech with Bio. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the uh, <laughs> the Jugger J style, the Juggernaut Jason style. <laughs> uh, he is a big fan of head setting up those strong positions, sensor towers, siege tanks, ghosts. We obviously don't see ghosts just yet, but the Ghost Academy is on the way. Obviously, you need that fourth base up to be able to afford it. Fungal Grave only going to catch a couple of Marines right there. Foxer is kind of having a little bit of a difficult time maneuvering his army through the middle, and he's he's kind of. Uh, he hasn't gotten caught yet, but if he keeps moving that bio around that peninsula on the bottom side, he is inevitably going to get fungled and lose a lot of supply there. He's got to be a lot more careful than he has been. Uh, we are going to see 2-3 finishing very shortly for Eric. He just finished up his plus 3 carapace. And with Kitness plating done and no 3-3 three, three yet for the uh, Terran and no ghost out yet, this Ultralisk Infestor Ling Bane timing has a lot of teeth. Really nice harassment, by the way. The Mutas recognizing there's not enough bio to fight this. Snipe is going to get canceled. That's a dead ghost. Ah, he trades yeah. out the Mutas in a pretty effective way. And here comes the Ultras, the Lings, the Banes. Just running on through. Fungal growth being thrown out. Mostly just hitting the Marauders right now. It does seem like Foxer will be able to push this back without actually losing oh, too many... <laughs> Just, just body block that SCV. ultra. Yeah, single SCV walling in the ultra. The ultra is like, I can't stomp over you. I can attack you, but I choose not to. You're a civilian. Man, <laughs> imagine else. what that SCV pilot must have been thinking during that. Just like, he's like pushed up against the missile turret by this stampeding elephant. And he's just like, all right, yeah, I just got my blowtorch. Just going to work on this missile turret here. Don't mind me. <laughs> uh... Yeah, that is the equivalent of watching a 16-wheeler or like an 18-wheeler truck just turn over sideways to avoid you. It's just like, oh, yeah, okay, I guess you're not going to run me over. <laughs> I'm grateful, but like, oh, my God. I am so sorry to have done that to you. Uh, Mutas in the main base are going to be going to town here. They're going to find you actually quite a few so ghosts. ghosts. Like, I think... Almost all of the ghosts that have been killed this game, which is only two, actually, it turns out. <laughs> I thought there oh. was. I actually thought he just killed two, and I know he killed one earlier. But yeah, yeah. those ghosts Excuse just me. barely survived. They're they're tanky boys. They really are, man. Especially it's like my favorite interaction is when you see Banelings charging ghosts, and you're like, <gasps> and then the Banelings look like they just tickle the ghost. You're like, wait a second. Oh, Banelings really just don't hit ghosts very hard, do they? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Snipe's going to be able to turn this attack away. Oh, the repair on that siege tank was clutch as hell. Lings, Muta's trying to get in on the right side. They will be able to take down quite a few of these missile turrets. And that is going to open up the opportunity for the Muta's to come back in. But we've got the double Nidus Worm in the main base. Is there enough for Foxer to deal with that? That is a huge deal. What is inside of there? It's a lot of Hydras and ultras for that matter and with double nidus worm you unload so fast that is very quickly a large army to handle in the main yeah it really is now ghosts are going to have a beautiful opportunity to get snipes off though with all oh. of that production to kind of create a wall that is a bit unfortunate i want to mention really quickly over here as we do have another little skirmish on the north side eric he has a superior economy he can afford to do this but eric has lost like 
uh, 19,000 yeah. resources and Foxer's only lost 11,000. Foxer is playing the hyper efficiency game right now. And Eric, he can afford to play it. And I think, I think this is a good map for Eric to play this just swarm my opponent playstyle. There are so many bases for him to take, but it just keep an eye out on it. All right. Just, yeah. I see the win condition here for Foxer, even if it is a bit further off. It is it is a ways off, but he is doing a good job so far. He's on he's on five bases. Game oh, closed. I'm gonna have just a quickie little pause here. Is it a mouse or a bug? Which one is it? Well done, Ravi. Well done. Uh, Fox are saying, take your time. <laughs> I'm just imagining being like, I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> Fox is like, I already ordered oh, delivery. <laughs> I ordered a pizza right before the match. He's just playing with one. No. I don't uh, think you could play this game with one hand. There's a lot going on. No, you definitely could not. There is so much happening. Uh, Eric has been so aggressive, and he's been doing such a good job of trying to smash through his opponent. And the tech switches have been really cool. Like, it's been Mutaling Bane into Ultra infester into Hydraling Bane. Now he's added the Lurkers on. <laughs> like, this is actually bonkers. And uh, that depot wall was insufficient before. Foxer tried to finish it, and then it just it just didn't get finished. Like, it got denied from being supply finished. Insufficient depots. Indeed. Yeah. But well, as the nice Lurgers go down, that's a, an, offense, or, uh, an offensive. That's an efficient cleanup. Yeah. I mean, it's all those little things like that where the Lurkers didn't really trade out that much value, and... Eric is just kind of bleeding out extra resources over here. He has to find a way to break through Foxer at some point. Hey, this is fine. I would say the first real bit of damage that I feel like we've been able to see from Eric for a while is sniping off that planetary. It's something that absolutely can be replaced, but it is something. Like, this is actual damage that Eric is yes. doing to Foxer right now. It is, but Foxer is not going to... He's not going to fall to this. Mm -hmm. And as another four Lurkers get cleaned up, I am starting to get real worried about the efficiency game. Now, if Eric can take, I mean, he's actually already taking one of the bases that theoretically should, air quotes, belong to Foxer. Snipes on the Banes. Nice. Gets quite a few pickoffs there. Oh, Fungal Growth. That is a huge one. And there's the chain. But all the Banelings save one getting cleaned up before they can connect. And it doesn't matter if you fungal the Banes if you can't kill them off. The triple scan from Foxer making sure there's no burrowed infestors there underneath that was a uh, that was a panic scan if ever i've seen it but he he does hold and he keeps pretty much all the ghosts alive only five have died in this whole game yeah actually pretty amazing re ghost retention and has as many ghosts now as he does have marines 21 on the field for each Oof. uh yeah now this is this is where it does get a little bit interesting and tricky as a sensor tower pops up and sees the mining from the zerg base on the uh, bottom right but it's where eric now has been expanding so quickly yeah he can start to try and mine out resources on foxer's side of the map like he's able to steal bases from foxer which he needs to do by the way nice blinding cloud keeping that viper alive uh just before it would have died to the missile turret eric is doing such a good job of never taking a straight up fight for the most part, he did obviously the the, the last little bit trying to uh, find those ghosts, but he's been rotating so much. But look at the sensor tower placement, not just seeing the minerals of his opponent, but look at how much he sees on the map, period. Mm -hmm. Now, Foxer needs to prevent Eric from mining an extra base up on him. Because if it ends up being eight bases to six, it is going to be a problem. But at the same time, Eric does not want to let Foxer take that sixth base either because we've already got Foxer building a bank. The resources lost is insane right now. It is 15,000 more in favor of Foxer. Foxer is winning that so hard. But I'm, yeah. I'm still super... Foxer's going to need another base very soon, is what I'm saying. No, I, I'm actually 100% with you. To me right now... The sixth base is what this game is going to be about. I, I think it's going to be about Eric denying the sixth base of Foxer. And if Foxer can take that sixth base, I just suddenly start believing so heavily in his ability to actually win the game in like the very, very long term and just out uh, cost efficiency 
Eric in the long term. Yeah, it is worth noting, of course, that the sixth base that uh, Fox is going to have to take. Oh, oh, wow. That's a big find right there. He gets the Infestor. I think he got two Vipers and he gets an Overseer. That's a lot of gas right there. 600 gas going down. Um, yeah, I do want to point out that the base that Foxer is going to try and take is going to be very difficult to secure and is going to spread him a lot thinner than if he could have secured that base on the other side. Ooh. Oh, big fungal. That is a there lot is. of ghosts that just went down. Yeah, finding quite a bit over there. And I'll mention that Foxer, he's been dipping a bit more in supply and he's not really replacing it super fast. He's adding on more siege shanks as well as opposed to replacing the ghosts that he's been losing. He's adding on liberators and stuff. So he is also kind of adapting and changing his composition. What do you think about the Greater Spire, Dave? It's, I mean, Broodlords can be good. They're a lot more mobile than they used to be, but they are really, they're really difficult to make work because even the units, like even without Thors, Ghosts can still deal with Broodlords pretty effectively. And, I mean, he's, he's on... What is he on on the upgrades? He's going to be on 2-0 eventually. Well, pretty soon for the Broodlords. Or, no, yeah, yeah, for the Broodlords. Uh, I don't know. It, it feels just really tough to crack a Turtle's Heron. And for me, I feel like Hydraling Bane is usually the better option. But when Fox are slow playing it so hard like this, it is really tough to get the job done. Yeah, and so far he has not been able to really break through in that top left-hand base. It's getting more and more and more established. The bottom right-hand side sure is like a little bit more secure and it's actually Eric, I would say, that's kind of being the defender on that side, but oh, he's got so many spores. He's got, yeah, <laughs> like the visit repositioning on the siege tank, but I mean, the lurkers plus the spores are just covering so much against any kind of aggression there. Yeah. Uh, now, I will say that as Eric loses, he, he never actually got a ton of creep up to the top left. He had really good creep spread on the right side, but it's been cleared out of the middle. It never really got to deny that six base. And now as Foxer gets that online, he is maxed mm -hmm. out. Eric, I think, is saving supply maybe for Broodlords. Yeah, there we go. 17 Corruptors just start <laughs> on up. He has got okay. so much money in the bank, and it is going to be a really strong transition. But Foxer's on three factories, so he could go into Thor's. They are only 1-3, they would be, but even the ghosts alone are going to be pretty decent against this. Nice spell casting there. Oh, that's a lot of tanks to get picked off, but good save right there from Boxer on the fourth one. Yeah, also, he ends up getting a snipe off on like pretty much almost all the Vipers. I think one Viper man should get away there, so oh, yeah. it was a trade at the same time, and Boxer is going to try moving over here. Medivac gets sniped off by one of the, like, 15 spore crawlers in this forest. And oh, both ghosts die at the same time. He d he needed to spread those ghosts in order to make that work. <laughs> Fungal growth on the SCVs. Very funny to see. Uh, obviously, those were trying to be sacked by Foxer. He wants a higher army supply. And with the EMP coming in behind that, that actually... I mean, that still ends up being a good thing for Foxer, I think, because a lot of Banelings were used to blow up SCVs, and those were SCVs that were trying to be thrown away. I, as more and more time passes, and we see Foxer securing these bases, I get increasingly worried for Eric. He just hasn't been able to find a good fight really yet. Yeah, he really is... It feels like he's been struggling. Like, the yeah. most damage I've really seen Eric get was, I think, the one surround he had gotten on the Ghost earlier. Like, I want to yeah, say the, the seven backs, minutes right? ago or something at this point. And the snipe off on the central planetary fortress, which I think mm. was also, like, eight minutes ago. I don't feel like Eric has really been able to find the big trades he's been looking for for quite a while now. Yeah, I got to agree. Uh, now, if you make enough Broodlords, you can obviously overwhelm Ghosts, especially with the Fungal Growth combination. Uh, and with no Vikings out yet, no Thors out yet, this could be very scary. EMP on the Infestors. Well, can't get Fungals. You don't have any energy. Only one available. Oh, EMP somehow actually didn't hit it. I thought that would have been enough. But now the Broodlords reveal themselves. Six Vikings instantly started up there. These are going to be one, three Vikings. Broodlords are going to try and get sniped, but I actually think this is a really good fight for Eric. Mm -hmm. 
He's going to be losing all of his ground force, though, and I think that's when it gets a little bit scarier because the Brutalords now suddenly don't have any kind of helpful defense over here. Some Corruptors are going to start being added into the mix just to try and help out versus the Liberators and maybe eventually snipe off some of these Metavacs. The Siege Tanks are all unseaged, and it feels like these Ghosts are getting the opportunity they need to start sniping off some of these Brutalords. Yeah, but there's only six ghosts left on the field. Now just four. This is actually amazing for Eric. He is going to be able to clean up so much of this army. And that Broodlord transition did end up being what the doctor ordered. These siege tanks, they're cutting through the broodlings quickly, yes. But I think Foxer just needed to pull back as soon as he saw the broodlords pull back to the high ground. Instead, he continued to fight on the low ground, and it ended up being a really rough fight for him. But Liberator's actually doing very well against the broodlords initially. Siege tanks are going to unsiege, resiege, end up getting caught pretty hard by the lanes. And once again, Eric has found an opportunity. Good job from Foxer to save a good number of those siege tanks. And the Broodlord count has been significantly uh, cut down. But Eric has a huge bank still. Foxer has fully depleted his. I think in the, the total calculus of this, I think I like this a lot better for Eric. But Foxer mm -hmm. is by no means out of this game, and Eric's bank is... I mean, that gas bank is pretty nearly gone. Yeah. Ooh, no I, gas Foxer, there. Foxer is actually... He had a little bit, and he had to wait to actually even remax, and he's remaxing by adding on additional Marines, which is something he has not really been making a ton of before. And usually when you're in these late-game situations, you aren't expecting to make a ton of Marines. I like a little Liberate Harassment on the very bottom right-hand side, which is doing some drone damage, just trying to attack uh, Eric a little bit. Oh, he's going to yeah, kill the base. I... Oh. Hey, that's nice for denying gas mining. And a couple of Broodlords act... Well, one Broodlord getting sniped. There are no Vipers here. They're very far back, and you can't land a Fungal Parasitic Bomb without those Vipers. EMPs blanketing the Infestors, too. A lot of them getting shut down. That was a very good little skirmish for Foxer. No, most certainly. Now, like you said, it's about gas income for Eric, just because Mineral Bank has really gotten covered over there, but losing some of the Broodlords, losing more of these Banelings, he's not quite finding the big trades. He's not really finding any fungals, and a lot of the Infestors going down. Now the Vikings starting to take care of all these Broodlords in the sky and hold the phone. We're talking about depleted banks. I mean, Eric is down to 1,000 gas left over. That, that's it. He's making lings and hydras right now. He doesn't even have that many broodlords left over. No, he does not. And his gas mining is now kind of pitiful. Uh, it is so small at this point. Foxer has outlasted Eric, outlasted Eric in this game number one, and now he is pushing forward. He knows that he's got the initiative, and he knows that his opponent is pretty much broke. He's obviously got to be careful about going too deep onto creep. You know, a big Ling Bane Hydra surround. A couple blinding clouds in this army could still evaporate very quickly. But Foxer is going to take this base on the top side. He's still mining a decent bit. There's no gas to mine from there. But how much? How many? Uh, how many resources worth of gas are there on the field right now? There's there's not a whole hell of a lot. That is for sure. Yeah. Really, really not that much. There's definitely some gas left over in the top left-hand base for Foxer. Eric has a little bit of gas remaining in this bottom right-hand base. And I guess his, uh, yeah, last two bottom right-hand bases maybe have another, like, 4,000 or something gas amongst them for Eric. He d can definitely remake some of this stuff, but I really don't think he can afford to take another fight like that one. Oh, he, uh, he can't afford to take uh, quite like that. That is for sure. He's going to try and get in here, though. There's a lot of Liberator Siege, and this is going to be just a massacre here, even with some good blinding clouds. Well, hang on. Actually, the Fungals are huge, too. Ooh. Oh, it, but there's no Parasitic Bomb, and now the Thors and Ghosts go to town. Foxer is still going to have enough here. He loses a lot. That actually went way better for Eric than I expected. I thought that was going to be a total massacre, but it's still a good fight for Foxer in the context of the game. Eric is going to lose all of the Broodlords. He's trying to desperately remax on just, well, mineral units pretty much. He's got Hydras and Banes. That's all of his gas spent. If Foxer holds this base for even just another minute or two more, I think that this is just lights out at this point. It's going to be really tough to recover from that. But I, I do wonder, you know, Eric had so many minerals available. He really can 
make an absurd number of these lings and lings do quite well against you know siege tanks against thors there's not really like a ton of marines i know obviously the ghosts can hold their own for a little bit but even the banelings will eventually take care of those what action do you think that like foxer's army can actually stand up against just a massive remax of just lings and banes and hydras with no Hellbats, it's going to be really scary. The Vipers could land some big blinding clouds. That is a huge blinding cloud right there, knocking out a lot of the tanks. And Eric might end up having enough after all. Fungal Gross landing as well. Fours are trying to be microed back, but Eric has actually done it. The bank was just a little bit too big. I thought for sure Foxer had that one, but yeah, you were right. There was not a whole lot to deal with the Lings. Foxer didn't recognize what... Eric's last card to play was, and he yeah. didn't get anything that really dealt with Ling's well. Uh, it could have been a ton of Marines. It could have been, you know, six Hellbats. It could have been, it could have been just about, well, maybe even Widowmines, but I, I would have preferred Hellbats or uh, Marines. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to do so. And now Eric has reestablished a very strong supply lead at this point. Even still, okay, are there any Vipers left? There are no Vipers. There are two Infestors. Eric just now built an additional mm. Viper. I, I Actually, do I love the Lurkers? How many Siege Tanks are there? There's three Siege Tanks. Yeah, I love the Lurkers. Yeah, the Lurkers are great here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Lurkers, he's been able to keep them alive for such a long time. They're definitely going to be able to add some additional value if you can find any kind of fight with them. But... This is a really tough spot now for Foxer. The, all of the cost efficiency that he has been putting out for this entire time, 30,000 resources less lost for Foxer at this point. But he's still the one that's broke. And Eric yeah. still actually has that little bit of mining going down on that very south base. He's still got maybe like an extra 200, 300 gas left over on that uh, like right bottom right hand base as well. And he's actually pushing through. He's breaking through these planetaries as well. That is going to be kind of expensive, though. Yeah. For Like, there's no resources there. Uh, losing a lot of units, even losing, Ugh. like, one or two Banes here is pretty pricey. You there's a target fire. Uh, it's going to be a lot of them. He's trying to draw his opponent out. Foxer does get baited. The Fungal Growth going to be huge Ooh. here. The Banelink connections will be big on top of those Marines. Liberators are going to try and hold the line behind this. Eric will get pushed back. There are 13 Hydras on the field. Eric is still got a little bit of money in the bank. And Foxer is going to be forced to tap out. Eric barely, by the skin of his teeth, had enough to make that one happen. That Man. was so close. Like, I have to say that one fight that we were talking about in that top left-hand side... Just the fact that Foxer, the one thing I think, like he was prepared for almost any army composition except for a massive Ling Flood. Yeah. And there was exactly one thing Eric had the resources for. And it was a Ling Flood. There was literally one thing he could, I guess technically he could make, I don't know, like 10 Queens or something, which would not have been very effective against all those ghosts. But man, that really was like the one thing he could not handle and yeah. that was the one thing that eric had <laughs> i i really wonder what would have happened if foxer because there was a few times where foxer was refused to give up a position and mm -hmm. a, a fight broke out that was bad for him and instead of disengaging right away and getting himself out of there and saving units, giving up the position and trying to retake it after he stuck around for the fight it happened both times once when he mm. saw the Broodlords for the first time. And that was that was Eric's first like opportunity to actually break through and get something rolling. And then once again, that fight around the sixth base, or sorry, seventh base that he had just secured. Was it seventh? Yeah, that was the seventh base. Oh, yeah. If, if he had been more willing to give up those positions and adjust his composition then, because imagine, mm -hmm. I really can't, like Hellbats or yeah more marines like it would have been such a different story but eric the tech switches were so dynamic he really showed a clinic of breaking down a turtle terran there and i gotta give him so many props because that's so hard to stay focused in a game like that 
Mm -hmm. Just barely outlasting his opponent and uh, goes up 1-0 as a result. Man, steadfast. After that first game, I have so much to say about the map for the second game as we head on to Ghost River for game number two. Uh, we can go ahead and introduce the players and stuff first, and then we can talk about the map. That we can. Spawning up at the top left with an extractor trick. Almost certainly going to be an extractor trick. 15 hatch. It is the Cranky Ducklings, Eric. And up here in the top right-hand side of the map, the most patient uh, Terran player around, he is Foxer. And, ah, dude, Ghost River is just, whenever I see this map, it's just all I can think of is each player only gets six bases. Like, there is a limited number of bases you get. It's a smaller feeling map in a lot of ways, even though there's a lot of kind of choke points and everything as well. But I'm not surprised for that reason to see Eric doing even small things. It's not necessarily going to be hyper committed aggression, but you know, going for a pool first and going for like the gas geyser, if he decides to get more aggressive and stuff, because if Foxer gets to play a similar kind of game, the chances of Eric stealing one of Foxer's bases feels really, really difficult. That feels yes. like a very big ask. And Eric does not get to take eight bases when Fox is sitting on five. It's just, he literally gets six bases, that's it. And then Foxer will be on four or five bases. And then Eric will just run out of funds. Yep. I If the game goes the same way as the last game, Foxer will just win that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's the only way that Eric was able to make that happen is because he mined so much more than his opponent. Like, mm -hmm. ridiculous amounts of additional resources. Ooh, Foxer is going to scout these lings moving out. Eric did, he didn't go for the extractor mm. trick 15 hatch. He went for the extractor trick, uh, he went for the extractor Ooh. trick 15 pool. And it is going to be burrow roaches coming in from Eric. I haven't seen this for a while. No, I haven't seen this in a very long time. And I gotta say on a map like Ghost River with relatively short rush distance, a flat ground natural, which most of them have, but, and for the, mo the reasons you mentioned, I actually like this build order choice a lot. Now, obviously, the Roach Horn was spotted, but there's no way Foxer is thinking Burrow Roaches. Yeah, I I think that's going to be a very, very unlikely expectation. But it does still kind of beg the question of like, okay, how much value can he get from the actual Burrow play here? Because the Burrow Roaches are definitely annoying. Do not get me wrong. But Fox is already high ground bunkering. He's like, he's prepared to give up the natural if he has to. And... If Eric invests a lot into these roaches, which I feel like you have to if you want to get almost anything done with this, Fox is just going to straight up be ahead, right? Like, this is a really, really tough spot, I feel like, for Eric to make work. It's going to be interesting because he will have the ability to burrow a Ling at the natural mm -hmm. expansion. That is going to be annoying, and that's going to require scans to clear out. But, yeah, this is a pretty dedicated setup. This is 150 minerals, for the Roach Warren, block for 50 drones. Oh, he, yeah, he is supply blocked, you're right. Uh, it might be a constructed supply block, but I'm not sure. Oh, oh my God, losing the first Roach is so bad. Okay, well, this yeah. is actually already handled because now he can't force the lift off on the command center. And the entire objective of this build has been basically shut down, I think, which is to force a lift. Okay, yeah, th this looks, this feels so good for Foxer now. Yeah. I also don't like that. I think that Eric instinctively is doing like the burr or he was retreating back with roaches to break the cycle and lock on. Yes. When he could have just, just burrowed and it's like, yeah, oh, man, this is really not ideal. At most, he's, I think, maybe going to be able to get like two SCVs. I do like the way he spread these roaches out, making scans yeah. very difficult to find them all. But yeah, with the amount of commitment, uh, so yeah, 200 gas for the burrow for the roaches, 150 minerals plus the 50 minerals for the drone, plus another 300 minerals for the roaches, plus it's not drones being built. Oh, we unburrowed the roach. Okay, okay, I was like, ah, what are we doing here? Wait, that you can is... reaper grenade it to slow, no, it won't... the reaper <laughs> grenade will not do enough damage. But... How many reaper grenades would you need to out, <laughs> out uh, DPS well, the healing of a roach? It's, it's five damage, right? So if you it's land so little, all of yeah. them simultaneously, then a roach has what 125 hit points or something 135 135 okay cool yeah you could do the math now dave you you promised that you would take every single math challenge 
Yeah, absolutely. 135 divided by 5. That is... Because it automatically gets the 1 uh, HP of regeneration, so it would be 140, which would make it... What is that? 28? 28 Reaper Grenades simultaneously thrown down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a calculator. It is 28. I will confirm. Thank you. No problem. I'm <laughs> proud of you, Dave. Me too. I, I was a little Ooh. scared. Supply block for Foxer at 69. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that man. is actually, it's actually a really bad block too. His depots are yeah. very late. Uh, Dude, it's kind of been a crazy day for supply blocks. I, I really feel like, you know, this is just what happens when up a tree doesn't stream at his normal time. It's just everyone else gets the supply Someone blocks. has to be supply block. He yeah. absorbs the supply block so that others don't have to. <laughs> he's not the hero we needed, or he's not the hero we deserved. He's the hero we needed. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we oh, are going to see a scout coming on in. We'll see. Well, he actually doesn't see the roaches. And this is a very low drone count, relatively committed attack. We do have Foxer getting into the natural. I mean, look at the worker count right now. Foxer is ahead in workers in a TBZ. This is this is real bad news on paper for Eric. Foxer will get pushed back by this little drop. Ah, can can Eric do what he needs? Because he needs to get a lot of damage done, I feel like, with this 1-1 one, one Roach timing. But it looks like he's actually going to drone out of it. And he's not going to go for the attack. Uh, he did get some utility from this burrow ling play and he's gonna be able to force the scan i wonder if foxer just drops the scan beforehand eric obviously doesn't need to attack until the third base is landed anyways but his <laughs> one one is completed this is kind of his timing a little bit but he's just gonna go straight into two two okay so he's creating another timing in the future yeah i don't know this is a I think you're right. This is a very tough spot. There's the scan. He's finally going to clear out that Ling. Looks like the Roaches are going to get hit by one of the Sea Chanks when they start moving too far forward. But these Marines just do not care. Cyclone does get taken out by the Curse of Violin. Maybe a little overestimation there as the 1-1 one, one upgrades really helping out versus those Marines. Yeah, I think the big thing is that there was no combat shields combat either. Shield. That yeah. it, it makes it so much more difficult for those Marines to survive. SCVs. Oh, cheeky Burrow. Oh, that is under the command center. That was cute. That was very <laughs> cute right there. Uh, Eric, though, has got to be really careful. He's losing a lot of stuff, and he's not winning the game. He is trading, and he's denying mining time, but it's he, he's got to be very careful about not overcommitting here. Yeah. Oh, nice cancel on the sensor tower. I'm, I'm with you in the sense, especially, that now he has a lot of Ravagers, and he's finally reinforced with some Roaches, so the Roaches are more okay with him losing, but those Ravagers are really important. If he wants to actually... If he can find pickoffs on Siege Tanks and things like that, I'm much more in favor of those kind of trades, because yeah. he is actually getting tech up behind this. It's it's not a great economy to tech up with. It's a three-base Zerg player that's going for a Hive, as a fourth base, I guess, is still technically building right now. But if he's able to at least trade out versus power units that Foxer has and not lose his Ravagers, I'm at least okay with it. Yeah, and it is frustrating to deal with this because Terran players are not used to having their third base denied in this matchup for so long. And mm -hmm. it, it's an uncommon game state, whereas I'm sure Eric is very used to the cost to a Terran of what it is to for them to not have that third. And it's a big cost. Fungal Growth, by the way, did find a couple of units. We are going to see those uh, Roaches able to once again burrow. He's been doing <laughs> such a good job with playing wow. whack-a-mole with these units. And now he's going to force a supply block here, picking off these depots. Boxer did have a bunch of uh, supply depots finishing, so it, it ends up being a, a mm -hmm. null moot point. But Eric is doing such a good job of grabbing value with these units. Boxer, ooh, he needs a move like this to get him back in this game. There's yeah. not very many units in position. There is a queen ready with a transfuse. Oh, but we're going to see an attack coming on in here. Foxer will lose that siege tank very quickly. 2-2 Two -two is done for Eric. SCV is going to pull into this. And now it's just Ravagers left over. This is going to be a very expensive set of losses. Oh, nice throw oh. spiles on the tank at the end. Now that's still very worth it, I think, for Eric. Mm -hmm. I, it looked kind of scary in the sense that he lost so many units, but I'm yeah. kind of with you. In the end, you can sort of look a little bit at the supplies and the fact that 
he saved his fourth base, I think was really, really massive. Killing off that many workers, saving your own fourth base, like long-term economy-wise, Eric should be feeling pretty okay with that trade. But obviously there is the cost of his army supply that he gave up. Mm -hmm. But I still feel like his army is actually big enough to deal with an attack if, if one just showed up at his front door right now. Oh, absolutely. It absolutely is big enough. Uh, now, you talked about the, the difficulties of this map. Eric is going very aggro in an effort to prevent this from going to the super late game. And even at this point, even he's trying to keep it from even going to the late game, period. <laughs> uh, he doesn't want to let his opponent get anything going. But I did want to see him. He, he's done it now a little bit. I would have liked to have seen him drone up to maybe 80, even 85, and get that fourth base saturated basically as soon as he... Uh, right after he went for that big trade in the middle. But he hasn't gotten this huge economy. So being able to continuously trade is going to be quite difficult for him. Foxer, though, Foxer hasn't even taken his gases at the, the third base yet. He is just so focused on not dying. And that is a tall order for him at this point. Yeah. Rocks being knocked down just to open up the pathway for the rest of the Lings and the Roaches and the Ravagers to not have to be choked up even just a little bit over here. Wouldn't mind if he even worked on these other rocks that are here on this ramp with the Roaches and Ravagers, but he's going to just kind of try and circle around. He's nearing the max out point, so I imagine that Eric is looking for go time soon. Yeah, and there are no counters to the Vipers right now. It is just going to have to be excellent spreads, excellent unit positioning. Nice fungal growth, gross bile combo does catch one or two metabacks. Oh, just one metabac. Uh, Eric really wants to make use of these spellcasters as much as possible before Vipers or before Ghosts hit the field. He is going to try and bulldog through this. Actually, step through his own blinding cloud into a bit of a concave. And that is going to be a good defense from Foxer. Eric coming in from just the one angle. Oh, the scan does catch the Infestors. That could have been a huge fungal growth if that had managed to connect. Yeah, we are going to see another continued push in forward over here from the Blinding Clouds coming down oh. over on that Sea Shank. Another couple of these Sea Shanks getting Viper abducted. Fungal growth coming on out, and it does seem like Eric is starting to run a little bit thinner on Yudas, but he's also taken out a lot of SCVs. He's cleared up a lot of his opponent's units, and he's still continuing to make more Infestors, more Roaches. Dave... I think that he did still manage to bust through there, and I still think that Eric is doing fine. But I'm just really surprised he was so insistent on pushing in from that particular angle, because I feel like of almost all the angles, cause that compared to, say, like an attack from the south side, I really felt like the south side was just a straight-up better fight for him, right? Like, that it, felt like such a choked-up fight for him the entire time. It was. It was a really choked-up fight. Um, even coming in from multiple angles could have made it uh, a fair bit better. I mm -hmm. think this is the one thing that Eric is missing, is changeling scouts to check where his opponent's army is to try and find those openings. It's always difficult to attack into a player that's on three bases because they're just not that spread out. Um, speaking of which, Eric is going to prevent the fourth base from coming on down. Bungle Rose is going to catch a couple of Marines. Boxer, the spreads in defensive fights have been very good considering how badly out tech he is. Corrosive Biles will land on one of those tanks. And actually, hang on, is there even enough to defend the main mineral line or the main ramp? This might be checkmate. Those infestors can lock the entire bio force out. I do like the hot pickup to get back into the main base, but Eric is maxed out. Foxer is not going to be able to get to his dream split map scenario so far. Eric is just denying it. He might even deny this plus three weapons, which would be really nice. Yeah, with so many of these units now moving from the main base and elevatoring down, going toward the natural, there's actually an opportunity for Eric to just move straight down to the third base and deny that. If he denies that, that might also be another form of checkmate. Fungal growths continue to be available. Abducts from the uh, Vipers also coming on forward. Those those fungal growths are just so scary. You can see Boxer poke forward and then have to pull back, but he can't really run back anymore. His base is under siege right now and he's losing everything. Man, Eric has done such a good job in this game. Yes, he may have committed a little bit too hard into a very uncomfortable angle, but he eventually was able to find that position. Almost, this almost felt like a TBT when a Terran <laughs> sieges your production. That's how Eric has played this, a fantastic series from him. And at this point, it feels like it, it is an inevitability. Foxer down nearly 100 supply. Eric 
maybe can chill out a little bit trying to get into the main base but he is going to take down another couple of tanks more and more roaches flooding forward resources lost is dead even which is a monster juxtaposition from the previous game of 30,000 different and even if Foxer holds which he will not 